It's time now for the political analysis of Fromm and Fuller. Al Fromm, former political advisor to President Bill Clinton, and Craig Fuller, former political advisor to both President Ronald Reagan and George H.W. Bush. Good morning, all. Um, you know, I, uh, you know, we could have gone on a couple of different subjects this morning, but I was fascinated by this idea that came out of France recently, where President Macron actually had terrible popularity numbers, and yet he did indeed go on and win re-election as president despite it all. I think of our president here in this country is, uh, could not be lower in terms of pop popularity, and yet um, is there a chance that he can succeed anyway? Uh, I'd be interested in both of your points of view. Craig, let's start with you. Well, the short answer is sure, he, he, he could succeed. And, it, and conventional wisdom now is that uh, it's too steep a hill to climb back up. But, you know, that's subject to change. I, a couple of thoughts. First of all, you'll accuse me of understatement, but leadership is darn tough these days. It's just very hard to pull together um, a you know, broad base of support for, for much of anything. And as a result, I, I hate to say this to future uh, hopefuls for presidential, uh, uh, presidential role, but they're probably doomed to be governing, governing in the 40% range, you know, and, and until events drive that higher. Now, uh, George Herbert Walker Bush with Iraq's invasion of Kuwait found himself when he said this will not stand in the 90% approval rating, but then it's steadily, steadily, steadily diminished. Um, his son, George W. Bush, uh, standing in rubble in New York after the tragedy of 9-11, drove his numbers up. But those were defining moments in a presidency where, again, their, their, the average was nowhere near those, those peaks. So first I, point I guess I would make is there could be a defining moment in the Biden presidency and when, when his numbers go quite a bit higher and the nation turns to him uh, for inspirational leadership. When, one hope it's, hopes it's not a tragedy, but these things typically do occur over the course of a, of a first term. Uh, but I, I think governing in the 40 percentile range, and he's a little below that, but governing there is probably um, what fate holds for them. Second point is that he's not going to face, if he chooses to run again, he's not going to face you know, the ideal candidate with 60 percent approval. He's going to face a Republican who's also probably in the 40 percent range. And, and so you have this contest of people who have to figure out how to build um, support among key constituencies. And the last point I want to make in this kind of round is that one of the most valuable things I ever witnessed and was party to was Dick Worthland coming into the Reagan White House after the midterm elections of 1982. And in 1983, showing us what, the, what kind of majorities Reagan had amassed among a whole host of constituencies by age, by income, by ethnicity, by urban, suburban, that sort of thing, what it took to win an election in 1980. And what he showed us was where we were with those constituencies at that moment in 1983. And guess what? We were behind in every one of them. But what we had was, were two years to focus on how to reconstruct a winning combination. And we, we could use public policy, we could use speeches. Uh, one quick example is that we learned that education kind of with, with several key constituencies was, a, was, a, was hugely important. And this was a president who had run in 1980 on shutting down the Department of Education. Instead, in the last two years, we went around and gave uh, presidential awards to schools highlighting the successes in education around the country. And, and he very much focused on education, not because we happened to stumble on it, but because we knew that it was going to be helpful to us in a general election. So again, he's, he's, uh, he, Biden, is in a pretty deep hole. Uh, it's not easy to climb out with some of the issues he has to deal with, but events could change that. And you know, he's going to run against someone, and that someone is also going to have some of these uh, difficulties trying to get over 50% approval. 
You know, Al, I, uh, I do want to get your point of view as well. I mean, we do think of popularity polls as indicating, uh, you know, kind of a kiss of death kind of stuff, but some people can survive it. And uh, I just wonder if you look at President Biden, whether he's one of those. Yeah, I guess it's our look. Uh, I look uh, in sort of two uh, uh, periods. One is this fall. Uh, and what's going to happen in the congressional elections. Uh, and then the next, of course, is the uh, 2024 presidential election. Uh, first of all, uh, as uh, Craig's uh, patron, uh, George H. Uh, w. Bush would say, uh, Joe Biden and the Democrats are in deep doo-doo. Uh, the uh, last week, I was on a briefing with Mark Penn about the latest Harris uh, 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 Harvard poll and uh, Penn had Biden's approval rating at 38. He said, you know, I always come up higher uh, than most uh, pollsters with Biden's approval rating for some reason. And sure enough, uh, a couple of days later, Monmouth had him at 36. Uh, that's, pretty, that's sort of bedrock. Uh, and, but the more alarming thing and the alarming thing for Democrats this fall is that uh, the numbers on the economy in every poll I've seen, uh, every public poll are the worst they've ever been. Uh, and inflation is just a killer issue. I mean, in Penn, uh, uh, the two biggest issues and nothing else is close are inflation and gas prices, which are really the same thing. Uh, you know, uh, so I think this fall, it's going to be very difficult. And in addition, uh, uh, the Democrats always have a steep hill to climb because uh, uh, of the small state bias, which uh, uh, at this point, since the Democrats don't win in the center of the country where the small states are, uh, always helps uh, uh, magnify the Republican vote. Uh, now, can it turn around? Uh, yeah, of course it's possible. Uh, you know, uh, and certainly before 2024, I mean, uh, Reagan showed it, as Craig said, Bill Clinton showed it. Uh, we lost the, uh, the Congress in, uh, uh, in 1994 and came back. Uh, uh, but I sort of think Biden's problems are a little bit deeper. Uh, you know, uh, when you look at why people, why his numbers are low, a lot of it is the current conditions, but people also are worried about whether he's up to the job. Uh, his age is a big factor. And as I've said before, and I know this because I've got the same problem, you never get any younger. Uh, and uh, to think about, he would be 86 at the end of his second term. That, you know, I, I just, uh, I think that is uh, uh, going to uh, uh, be a big problem. I sort of see a parallel, honestly, between Biden and Jimmy Carter. Uh, both were elected in unusual times after, after Republican scandals, uh, where the country wanted to get back to normal. Uh, and I, I sort of believe that probably neither of them would have been elected in, uh, you know, in normal uh times. Uh, Biden tried twice and never did very well in presidential elections, but the, the, you know, his calming personality uh, was just right for the country in 2020. Uh, the problem is that now uh, uh, people want a more active, vigorous president, and they question whether he can do that. Uh, now, can he be reelected? The answer is yes. Uh, Craig's right. Con the presidential elections are contests between two people. And uh, if Donald Trump uh, is the Republican nominee, my guess is Biden would have a better than even chance of being reelected. Uh, but you know, when a president's at 40%, and I, I, I saw this in the Carter uh, White House when I was there, and, and Craig will, uh, will appreciate this. Uh, the uh, Carter held pretty tight with Reagan uh, throughout most of the 1980 campaign. It was a very close race until after the debate, the last debate, uh, or the only debate. And what, but what happens when you're in a 40% presidency, it really means that people don't want you to be president anymore. 
But the question is whether your opponent is going to be up to the job. And in those days for Reagan, it was he was old. He was in his late 60s, which was, uh, I think, other than William Henry Harrison at that time, the oldest we've ever had in a presidential candidate. And uh, uh, when he showed he could, it was uh, uh, it was Katie bar the door for Carter. He dropped eight points overnight after the debate. Uh, so, uh, you know, it, it's going to take unusual circumstances again for Biden to get reelected. I just want to make one other comment because there's talk about uh, Trump announcing for president this month. And that could help the Democrats this fall because it could refocus the election on him and he loses. Uh, uh, you know, he lost uh, the popular vote in 2016. He got the Democrats had the best midterm ever in 2018 when they ran against him. And if he makes himself the issue again this time in his attempt to survive January 6th and all the grand jury proceedings, it could help the Democrats this fall. But it could also mean something else. Uh, we saw today that George Johnson resigned and he resigned because members of his own party after three years of going along with all these shenanigans said, finally, we've had enough. And I think if the Republicans do do worse than expected, Trump announces the Republicans do worse than expected uh, this fall, I think a lot of Republicans will jump off that Trump ship and he may have a hard time uh, even getting the nomination in 2024. Craig, uh, do you see the same analogy between uh, Jimmy Carter and uh, Joe Biden? Is that a fair one? Well, I, I think I think it's fair. I I, I think uh, again, there's just there's no doubt that that President Biden is in a very is in a very tough position. But it comes down to the challenger he faces. There's one factor we haven't discussed, and it may be more apropos to take the take the individual name out of it and just say the Democratic nominee versus the Republican nominee. And it has it does it has to do with momentum. And I, it's something I always paid a lot of attention to. In other words, where where our numbers were growing, where we're getting stronger. With George Herbert Walker Bush, you know, as as the sitting vice president, um, there are not too many, like only one other, that's managed to be holding the office of vice president and getting themselves elected president. It's a very difficult task, and the numbers were not all that good. I mean, uh, in fact, they were so bad after the midterm elections in 1984 that. Vice President George Herbert Walker Bush really wondered whether he should or even could seek the presidency. And this, he would been thinking about it and had had ambitions to, to do it for a long period of time. Um, but what we had going for us was we be, we gained momentum, and we never really lost that momentum. It it it, it worked steadily, and so Biden or maybe the Democrats, with starting with a lower position do have the ability if they find the means through issues and messages and maybe another candidate to build momentum um, could could come back. I, I do agree with Al I, in this. I, 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 there's, there'd be a defining moment should Trump get back in this race that would not be healthy for the Republicans and that, that could put them into a steady decline mm -hmm. uh, from which they would have a hard time mm -hmm. you know, coming, coming back. Uh, it's 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 just it's very volatile. I will I do the one thing that puzzles me. My last point is that, you know, the president has a gigantic megaphone and platform, and it's it's interesting to hear the Biden White House complain that they're not getting credit for all the things they're doing. Um, but then you have to ask, well, whose fault is that? Yeah. And I think that if they're going to come back, they have they really need to step up the communications game and be much more out front and public about what they are doing and put themselves into the story of the day as opposed to be being kind of running a civics lesson and explaining why a president can't deal with yeah. uh, Supreme Court decisions or gun control or whatever else. And, and that's something that I would have thought this administration with the experienced people there would do a better job of. But I actually think that's one area where they have fallen, uh, they have fallen short and there's consequences to that. Uh, Al, you have the last word in the remaining few minutes we have. Uh, I want to pick up exactly where Craig left, left off. Uh, one of the things that reminds me of my days in the Carter administration now 
is, uh, I mean, obviously we both uh, Carter and Biden have been plagued by enormous inflation, but uh, one of uh, the trademarks of Carter was that he always said the problems were bigger than any president could solve. And I'm hearing that out of this White House. And people want a confident president. There's nothing more important in a presidential race uh, than strength. And uh, so I do worry about that. I also think, uh, to be honest, uh, uh, both Trump and uh, if he decides to run and Biden, if he wants to run for a reelection, may have more trouble getting their nominations than a lot of people think. Uh, I mean, I think Biden would probably beat Trump in another head to head just because Trump uh, has uh, such a low ceiling. Uh, and uh, but uh, in the Penn poll, 71 percent of people in the, uh, said they didn't want Biden to run for reelection. 61 percent said they didn't want Trump to be on the ballot in 2024. Uh, I, have, I have a feeling that uh, if things don't improve markedly, that uh, Biden will have a real challenge for the nomination. I'm not sure where it will come from, but I, I don't think he's going to sail to the nomination. Uh, and, and uh, you know, with Trump, maybe he will be able to prevail uh, in the uh, uh, in the Republican Party, but I suspect that somebody will clear the field enough to get a one-to-one -one or two-to-one against him and be able to beat him in the primaries. We have to leave it there. Al Fromm, Craig Fuller, thank you so much indeed. We will see you next week.